Hi, I'm David Ledesma, Design Supervisor at Volcraft of New York, a subsidiary of Nucor. Today we're going to talk about our joist span tables based off of our catalog. To begin with, I'd like to talk about the designations. What are the designations? The designations often start with a number. That number, in example 30, signifying the depth of the joist. The second variable you'd be looking for is a letter. It can be K, can be LH, or can be DLH. Those values actually describe what type of joist it is, whether it's a K-series joist, a long span, or a deep long span. The next number will actually be found in black is the total load per foot that is applicable to that particular designation. This can be anywhere from 500 going all the way down to 200 if the, if the loads get small enough and the lengths get long enough. Finally, the last number that you'll see is a red number. That number is actually the live load portion per linear foot that that joist is capable of actually supporting. It is important that we recognize that that live load value that is actually stated there will actually be the live load that can be accommodated by that joist to be able to have a live load deflection limit of L over 360. This number, L over 360, will give you the deflection limit actually associated with the red number. If you multiply that by 1.5, you can then factor out the actual value that can be used to accommodate a deflection limit of L over 240. With standard designations, there also comes standard camber. Camber is actually associated with the length of the joist and has absolutely nothing to do with the loading on the joist. This is extremely critical. It should also be referenced on our catalog what these values are for any given length. However, if it does need to be that that particular camber needs to be associated with the loading on the joist, we can also accommodate this, but this is not standard and needs to be uh, qualified to be able to do so. In reference to standard designation joists, there is also a standard SJI camber. These values can actually be found in our catalog and are strictly based off of length, have absolutely nothing to do with the loading on the joist. This is extremely important that this is actually understood. However, if the loading on the joist actually needs to be accommodated for a specific camber, this can also be accommodated. It's just something that needs to be communicated with us. So please be sure to do so. In addition to standard SGI camber, we also have the ability to be able to do what are called load per foot joist. This is actually when you specifically give us the loads that you need us to design for. The total load, whatever that may be, and the live load, the red number, whatever that may be, you give us exactly those numbers and we will design that joist to, to, to be able to support those loads specifically. When joists are actually being utilized to be able to support gravity loads in conjunction with uplift loads, a net uplift value actually has to be furnished. This is extremely important that the net uplift value is provided and not the gross uplift. Oftentimes we do not know what the dead load is going to be to be able to deduce that from the total load and actually be able to incorporate what the actual loads are on the, the joists themselves. So it's extremely important that uplift values are provided in a net value. In addition to standard designation joists, we also have the availability to be able to do what are known as KCS series joists. This is actually a joist that utilizes a constant shear and a constant moment of a given value. These are especially important anytime we are designing joists to be able to accommodate potentially rooftop units that we may not know where the locations are. So long that we recognize what the load of that particular unit is, we have the flexibility of being able to provide a K-series joist, which allows us to make sure that a specific shear and moment is designed for that particular joist. Providing that the loads do not exceed those shear and moment thresholds, the joist will be suitable for the design. In reference to our standard designation joist, our tables actually reference a weight per foot value that is available for these. This is helpful in verifying exactly what the self weight of the joist will actually be. Please be sure to reference these as well.